around 600 letters that he wrote to his brother, Theo. Theo wrote back around 40 that are left to us. But we know a lot about his creative process, the way he thought, <coughs> his emotions, his feelings, and what he was thinking about when he was painting. He described lots of his painting of when he painted to them. So we're gonna see his life, his work. We're gonna analyze some of his uh, masterpieces, and I hope you enjoy it. So, so he wants to paint in order to serve God. That's his idea. If you see the first painting that we have done by Van Gogh, they're very gloomy. Uh, just one color, brownish, grayish tone that he uses. They look a little bit sad because of that, and that's going to change because we know what the outcome is going to be later on. He paints, again, the workers, the peasants, the people who are very poor that are in those small towns. So uh, this is one drawing, one lithograph uh, that he does of this man, and he puts the title. Many times we don't know the titles of the paintings, but in the case of Van Gogh, he puts a title, and the title is Eternity's Gate. has an agreement, a living agreement, with a prostitute. She is also an alcoholic. She has a daughter already. She is pregnant, and his father finds out about this, and he wants him to terminate this relationship. He still lives with her another year. She was already pregnant when this relationship started. So later on, just as a side note, she committed suicide, mm -hmm. sitting on the floor near the stove. And this is the description, of course, of what we are seeing. We can see already the textures and how he's uh, cross-hatching all the different areas in different ways to have that uh, light and shadows in this uh, drawing. He does many of those while she, he is living with her. While he is there, he's painting birds' nests, birds as well, still lifes, and that's also part of his development as an artist. As you can see, still he uses only very dark col colors, earth tones, as you can see right here, ochres, uh, um, browns, dark uh, grays, and that's what we see mostly. His father dies, and there's one painting that he does of the cemetery, the tower, the old tower of the cemetery. Still, even though we see the blue sky, it's a very gloomy sky, still very sad. When he starts painting the peasants around Munin, we see that he's changing the way he looks at them. He exaggerates his, uh, their features, and he starts to do individual portraits. Mm -hmm. It's very hard for a painter to try to convey a whole uh, composition of several individuals. So he starts by doing by one by one until he is really involved, and this is by his friend, Von Rappard, and they are trying to depict the workers, people who are working hard like these ladies around the table. And that is what Van Gogh is going to do with the potato eaters. And maybe you're familiar with this painting, but the idea here is a little bit different. As you can see in this painting, we see um, not people working. What do we see? Eating. 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 It's yeah. after they have worked. They come back to the house. They are together. They're eating together. They're interacting. Yes. But they look probably sad, tired. tired. Yeah. Maybe their expressions are not happy, but they are tired. But also the color of the painting because of the tone that he uses. They're very dark, and that's also part of the mood that we have. If you see the features that we see in this painting, we can see that he takes those individuals that he had already portrayed and puts them together in this gathering. Now look at the space. It's very tight. They're all together sitting around that table. There's no space uh, for breathing. You can feel that. And this is the first painting that's going to be exhibited in The Hague. It's not going to be sold, but it's going to be exhibited. It's from the Netherlands, from Flanders, exactly that area. And this is just one of the famous painters of the moment. Israel is one of those that paint interior uh, motifs. And if you see this one, and if we compare it with the potato eaters, 
we see the difference. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of similarities, of course, but there's a lot of differences as well. If you see the potato eaters, first of all, the color. Look at the light. Very, very light. Very, exactly. Very, Van Gogh. Van Gogh, exactly. So if you see the one by Israel, you see that there's a light in the center. They are all eating something. He does a lot of still lights with a very smooth brush stroke that's going to change radically later on. Still using earth tones. And by the way, this painting was done when his father died. But uh, I want to comment a little bit about it because at that time, Van Gogh is already an alcoholic. He's drinking a lot of absinthe. And even though we know and we think that he, was, uh, he had some kind of mental illness, as we're going to see, probably it was um, exaggerated by his drinking alcohol, uh, overwork, and also he didn't eat well. So probably the, everything came together at the end of his life. Probably thinking about how life it fades away, how everything that is earthy, it's going to go away, and that comes from also a tradition of what is called vanitas. When somebody does a still life and puts a skull in those still lives. About what happened in that mining town. And a lady saw him that he was, every night he was crying because he felt so bad for the people around him and they were so poor. So he was not fit for the job. We needed somebody who was strong as a pastor. So they brought him back home. At that moment, his father, because he had a lot of conflict with him, he didn't want to go to church, he was really depressed, and they wanted him a mental asylum at that time. They didn't send him. But imagine the ups and downs in his emotional mood from the beginning, from when he was a young boy. And this is the house today. He lives with his uncle. His uncle is an art dealer, as I mentioned. And this is one of the paintings that he is commissioned to do by his uncle. His uncle commissioned him to make 12 paintings. They did not like them. He tried to sell them, his uncle, but he couldn't sell them. For some reason, uh, the perspective was really interesting. Uh, it's from the rooftop. It's an aerial <coughs> kind of view, but they were not liked. There was nothing new about this kind of paintings. He has an agreement, a living agreement, with a prostitute. She is also an alcoholic. She has a daughter already. She's pregnant. And his father finds out about this. <laughs> and he wants him to terminate that relationship. He still lives with her another year. You can see already what is going to become of the development of his painting. A very bright brush stroke, very fast, uh, and very, very vigorous, with a lot of uh, vitality and vigorous. <clears throat> Let me just show you a comparison with Monet. This was done before the Impressionists, so this is before. Uh, 1874 is when they have the first exhibition of the Impressionists, but we still see the way Monet would paint. And you can see the difference with uh, Van Gogh. Van Gogh takes a further step, doing it in a, in a much more brighter tones. Let me just show you, this is today the same area with that bridge. going to be influenced by another movement, the Neo-Impressionist. He's going to meet Signa and he's going to paint with pointillism, divisionism, as we can see this example. This is a very different technique in use, the usage of dots, as you can see, and everything is put together with very tiny dots. He's going to use that in some of the examples, like this one, painting the restaurant, the cafe where he goes. As you can see, there's nobody there. He starts to try, he's trying to find his own way of painting. Still, he's exploring, he's experimenting, as you can see in this case. 